My name is Brett, and I'm the CEO of a nonprofit called New Story. And today, I want to share with you all the evolution of a crazy idea. Now, for the last four years, New Story has been building homes and communities for families on our planet that need shelter the most. And this summer, we're bringing those families the world's first 3D printed community. Homes that are printed in just days, built to change a family's future. It's pretty exciting, and here's a preview of how it works. Now, disclaimer, it goes fast, but not that fast. Cool. So, at this point, we are all familiar with 3D printing, right? We have them in our offices, our schools, uh, our universities, our hospitals. So how new, how crazy is this technology really? Well, for reference, here's the number of habitable, permitted, 3D printed homes in the world that we know of. And here's the number we helped create. Last year, with our incredible partner, Icon, we created a first-of-its-kind machine that successfully printed this house. It worked. The very first permitted 3D printed home in North America. It prints the home layer by layer in about 24 hours. And it's mind-boggling how you get cement to look this good. It's almost like soft-serve ice cream that's making a built-to-last, incredibly strong home. During the last year, we've worked with our partner Icon to create a new, bigger, and faster machine that will soon be deployed with the goal of 3D printing the world's first ever community this year. Now, it's safe to say this project has been the craziest idea our team has ever attempted. And we're a small team of all millennials with nothing to really qualify us for this task. I mean, think about it. Even if we were a large technology company and had all the resources at our disposal, we'd still be attempting to do something that's never really been done before. So not only is this project outside our industry, outside our expertise, but to be the first organization to successfully utilize 3D printing to create an entire community that like real people will live in and be born into seem just by all accounts pretty much impossible. It was a crazy, unrealistic idea. So the evolution of that, how does that start? What's the spark, the mindset? Well, at News Story, this is my team, we have a game we like to play. It's called Moonshots. We all get around a table, usually there's some wine involved, and we just start spouting out some of the craziest ideas that we can come up with. We've had all types of things said at the table. Things like, what if we could build homes for every single person in a small country? What if we could get these different presidents involved in this project? What if we could 3D print homes in a fraction of the time, better quality, and a more beautiful design? And what if we could print entire communities for the families that need it most? Now, when you have a crazy idea, you have a few choices. The first, easiest, and the most popular is to do nothing, right? And we all have done this, I've done this. You get a crazy idea, it seems amazing, and then the momentum just doesn't stick, right? Well, a little personal story. Um, when I decided to do something years before those moonshot conversations, it was after a trip that I took to Haiti, where I met families that had been living in tents for years after the 2010 earthquake. I met kids that slept restlessly on the dirt floor with no protection from intruders, animals or insects creeping in, the roof coming down at night. I felt firsthand just the oppressive heat and the overwhelming smell that families are just used to. And I could see how the one place that we all want and deserve to feel safe was actually just a breeding ground for disease 
and sickness. And as I slept in my comfortable hotel bed, the mother I met earlier that day had to stand all night while the rainwater and sewage rushed through her dirt floor because of a terrible storm, holding her baby in her arms. Starting a nonprofit in my early 20s was the last thing that I imagined I would do. But then at some point, doing nothing became even more unimaginable. So I teamed up with my co-founders, and we dreamed big, but we started small. So now fast forward a few years after starting News Story, back at this Moonshots conversation, we knew that doing nothing wasn't an option, and it hadn't been for a while. So what are the other options going forward? Well, the second choice is a popular one. It's simply to just be less crazy, more normal, reasonable. For News Story, what that would mean was just be like, okay, we'll just keep raising money and building homes and communities, kind of how they've always been done before, not really getting into this R&D and innovation and risk-taking stuff. So why not just do that? Be less crazy. To answer that one, I have to show you some numbers. This is the world's population in 2019. And in the blue section are the number of people that are living without adequate shelter. There's about one billion people in the world that do not have one of life's most basic human needs and rights. To put that into perspective, zoom out a little bit, aside from climate change, there is arguably no global crisis that affects a larger group of people. And it's growing. In about 30 years, 2050, the problem is projected to triple. There's going to be about 9 billion people on Earth, and it's an estimation that about 3 billion people will not have the shelter that they need. So you see, the traditional building methods of just minor improvements can't catch the scale of the problem. So we can't do nothing, and then we, and when I say we this time, I mean like the global social housing sector, New Story is a small part of that. We can't just keep doing things how they've always been done in a less crazy mode. So suddenly, we arrive at the third choice, which is the most unpopular and the hardest. Do something crazy. Now, we didn't know then, back when we had these moonshots, and although we have more confidence now, we still don't know what the outcome will be of this technology. But because of its revolutionary potential to be a breakthrough in how we build shelter for the future, our team felt it was just irresponsible not to try. And our team didn't wake up one day just feeling qualified to do something like this. No one is ever going to feel qualified to try to do something for the first time. And if anybody could be, it sure wouldn't be me. Not the most experienced, not the most money, not the smartest. So then, why? Why us? I believe is mindset. Choosing to actually pursue bold, crazy ideas. Now, if you make that choice, there is a cost associated. And I want to share a little insight into how I felt and how my teams felt during this project. It has been really, really hard. Just imagine being 29, having a team you absolutely love that are just pouring their hearts into building this organization together. Imagine the donors that have given so generously to fund these crazy ideas, expecting us not to like waste their money the government that has granted us land to make this happen, and most importantly, the families that, as I'm speaking, are waiting, are dreaming of moving into this new community, expecting us to pull this off. So yeah, when you go after a crazy idea, there's weight and there's risk. But then imagine this too. To start, this is the old story of an elderly mother living in a shack that is about to move in to the community where we will soon, God willing, be printing beautiful homes for the very first time. This is a father and his precious daughter that will be moving into the new community. And just imagine, after the first day they moved into their new house, 
They have the rest of their lives in a built-to-last home, in a holistic community, where she can have a better chance of excelling in her education. They can better achieve their dreams, increase their health, increase their income. And to simply put it, just have a safe place where they can love each other and grow as a family. And then, imagine scaling this out. Having other nonprofits and governments all around the world that are working on this problem, able to use technology to build more homes at a higher quality for the families around the world that need it most. This is no longer just some idea. This is happening. And it's not because of a news story. It's definitely not because of me. It's because a committed group of people and partners and an extraordinary team at ICON decided to say yes to a crazy, hard, seemingly impossible idea. So where does that leave us for you? Now, not all of you, but some of you have some crazy ideas. It doesn't have to be 3D printing communities. It could be whatever just feels crazy enough and seemingly impossible for you. I want to leave you with two things that I've learned along this journey. Number one, dream big, but start small. Don't let the craziness of your dream paralyze you from either doing nothing or being less crazy. My co-founders and I, we were so unqualified. We were 24 and 25, and we were just trying to build one house. It would be so tempting to say, one house, why bother? Well, thankfully, with some hard work, that one house has now turned into about 2,500 homes affecting thousands of families and on the brink of printing the world's first 3D printed community, all within less than five years. And that brings me to number two for your crazy idea. Work hard, never stop. Novel, right? <laughs> A real showstopper to end the TED Talk. But in all seriousness, We've talked about the beginning, the ideation of the idea. We've talked about a compelling vision, and that's awesome. That's great. But the in-between, the everyday reality of making it happen is where the magic happens. So on a daily basis, what does a going after a crazy idea look like? You wake up, and you do the same thing you did yesterday. You say yes to the costly consistency that it requires to go after an impossible task. You and your team, you just take one more step in the direction that you're after. And then one day, you'll look back and you'll know that every idea is only crazy until it's not. Thank you. <laughs>